taxidermy is in a sense an archive of life that is with us and life that is also under threat. Here at the American Museum of Natural History, taxidermy really came into museum exhibitry at a very early stage. At the time, there was a different ethic or philosophy about wildlife, that it was plentiful and plunderable. Many of these specimens came to New York with taxidermy, and the record was just, oh, the glories of Africa. Today, people look at a taxidermied specimen with mixed feeling in the sense that, well, it's so beautiful, but it's a shame that this species is actually on the verge of extinction or has gone extinct. We also have specimens of creatures that were very recently extinct, like the Tasmanian wolf, like the passenger pigeon, like Lonesome George. In the 19th century, the Tasmanian wolf was regarded as a pest. Farmers on the island thought it was responsible for killing livestock. The continual hunting of this species really drove it, presumably, to extinction. No one has seen a verifiable living Tasmanian wolf since about 1930. There were estimated in the 1800s to be about 2.2 billion passenger pigeon. We're talking about a species of bird that literally blocked out the sun for three days as flocks flew overhead. It was easy prey because so many birds flew overhead. There were shotgun parties to shoot these down. In some ways, it's the, the forces that we have today were the forces that drove the passenger pigeon to extinction around 1914. The loss of hardwood forests that the birds depended on, as well as the overhunting. And it's, it's an extraordinary thing how effective humans are in the destruction of a species that was so plentiful in the early 1800s. There may have been as many as 200,000 Galapagos tortoises occupying the various islands of the Galapagos. There's recognized as much as about 14 species on various islands, but in recent decades, at least four of these species have gone extinct. In 1970s, just one Pinto Island tortoise was left, and that was Lonesome George, all by himself, no mate, no family. And George, unfortunately, died in 2012. We were able to do the taxidermy on Lonesome George and bring Lonesome George to New York the response to Lonesome George at the museum was quite moving. I think people paused to reflect about the ephemeral nature of life and the vulnerability of even great creatures like Lonesome George. I think people get that sense of awe from that. They're really a memorial to what is no longer with us.